everyone, Lisa Jane here with Eurovision Island. You can see who my lovely guest is right now, uh, the lovely Zoe from <laughs> Austria. Hi Zoe. Hi, nice to meet you. Thank you so much for agreeing to meet with me. You of must course. be so busy at the moment. Well, yeah, it's quite busy, but uh, I enjoy interviews a lot. Oh, <laughs> thank you. First of all, you've <clears throat> just been in Tel Aviv, before that Amsterdam, and Riga. I haven't been to Riga. You haven't been to Riga. There was no time. I had some something different to do, but uh, Amsterdam and Tel Aviv, and it was amazing. It okay. was like an awesome experience, and I met many wonderful contestants uh, who I really uh, like got to like know better, and I really like them a lot. Like most of them, <laughs> like all of them, <laughs> and the songs are amazing. Like listening to them, listening to them live makes it like a lot different, and. They had the audience in Amsterdam and Tel Aviv was just amazing. I've never experienced something similar and it was like an amazing feeling, yeah. We've actually, we've seen um, you guys kind of getting selfies together and getting pictures yeah. together, all the artists. And it's been really special this year. I think you've kind of formed the class of 2016. Yeah, it was like, I'm being on a school trip. <laughs> <laughs> like getting everybody, but, but the selfies and stuff, it was like, we sometimes took staff because most of the time we didn't even think about that because we're having so much fun. And uh, yes, I'm really, I'm really happy that I've been there. It was amazing. Yeah. So have you got anyone in the pack that you've kind of become good, close friends with? Or just I mean, everybody? I mean, everybody's really nice. I've, I've talked to almost everybody. Just Russia that we, we didn't really get to know each other because it was very, uh, yes, a short term. Sure. Uh, but people who were in in Amsterdam and then in Tel Aviv, of course, we got we grew, grew closer together. I really like, uh, I mean, I like all of them, but the people I really got to know more, like maybe the Serbia and Israel, like Sanya and yeah. Hobie, yeah. uh, Switzerland, like uh, Rijka is a very nice person. Uh, and uh, yes, lots lots more, like uh, Bulgaria, Poli is very great, a great singer as well. And, uh, like lots of, lots of beautiful people and wonderful people from the heart. And, we all share the same passion, so we, it's like easy to bond with them, I think, because like people singing on the bus all the time. At the beginning, I was a bit scared because they, some of them already knew each other from Riga and from Moscow, and I was there like, I forgot. Like, so, like, I, the new I felt like a new kid in school. <laughs> it was like came in, in middle of, of school year, and I was like, oh god, I don't know anybody. But it, uh, yeah, it went so it, it really, uh, re I really opened up afterwards because I'm always shy at the beginning. Even if it doesn't seem like that, but when you meet new people, like hi, like uh, with my my boyfriend was with me in Amsterdam. We like we felt like the like the new kids in school. But then after like at the in the evening when you had the concert, like the tension fell and we all started talking to each other. And yes, it was amazing. Oh, lovely. I want to take you back to the start of your Eurovision journey mm -hmm. and back to. Now correct my German if it's wrong. Wir sind first, right? It's perfect. It's good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to learn German unsuccessfully. No, it was a very good start. Oh. Very good start. Thank you, Chef. Thank you, Chef. Um, so back to your, your your time there. How did you decide to enter? Why this year? Why not last year? Why? Well, I did it last year. Oh, did you? Yeah, I was at the nationals. Yes, Were so you? I, I was missed at it last year. Ah. Uh, and last year, I mean, I just finished school. I was like, I was 18 years old. I just, and I just got 18 years old last year in December. And then that was when the, 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 the whole thing started. At the beginning, it was just my, because I, my father and I wrote like two songs together just for fun. And my father had an event where a host from a local radio station, like the, the most uh, successful radio station in Austria, was hosting the event. And he heard the song and he was like, yeah, do you know that OF, like this TV station here, is looking for people for Vezing First Life for the Eurovision Song Contest. Don't you want to send your song in? And we were like, I mean, it was... I, I always wanted to be in the Eurovision, but for me it was like something that could never happen because it's such a big thing and there's so many great artists, like how could I be the one chosen one? And I was like, yeah, just, just try it out just for fun, maybe meeting new people and maybe getting a chance to just write new songs, stuff like that. And then we signed our song in and were like 300 people were chosen out of the whole um, videos and mp3 files they got. And I was one of them and I was like very surprised by that at first. And then it, and it got, got on and on and, and once I was like on stage here in the studio with 15 other people and it was like, duh, duh, like it was like getting real, like I didn't really realize I, I came so far. And then I was there with five other people, it was the six finalists. And then it was like second or third, I'm not sure because the voting was different, after the make makes. 
But I was not sad or like disappointed because I never thought of getting that far in the first place. So it was just, okay, that's that's amazing. I mean, wow. After that, um, we decided to, to, to release an album because instead of throughout the time we have heard many songs, to have um, more, like my father and I write the songs together. I know I'm talking a lot, I'm sorry. It's fine, you've got so, quite a lot of fans behind you, oh. you're waving at it. <laughs> people, <laughs> people. Um, and so uh, we wrote a lot of songs together to have more choices for the year version and a choice for the new list here. And then we released an album because we're like, okay, we have six songs, let's, let's write another six songs and release an album. Why not? It's called Debut and I released it in October 2015. And then I bought it. Really? Yeah. Cool. <laughs> and then there was one song on the album and we sent many of them to the radio stations and then one of them was like an airplay, like a lot, a lot, a lot. Like it was called Mukhaat Kukunu. And for me that was like, wow, that's amazing. And then the, well, I got asked again if I want to participate in it because of course I was like, I was scared of not winning again. Like that would have been not, not that cool for me because I really, I said, okay, I really want to do this. I'm just going to try it again. And uh, yeah, so we put a lot of, lot of energy in the whole thing and in the song and uh, then I finally, yes, I finally got what I wanted and it's great that I said like, okay, no, I'm not gonna, I think I'm, I'm quite proud of myself, like, can I say that? Yeah. That um, I did not give up because for me it's very important that if you want to have something, you want to like live your dream, you cannot just say, no, 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 it didn't work out the last time, so I'm not gonna try it again because you have always, you always have to fight for your dreams. And then in the end, eventually, uh, it uh, you, you get what you uh, yeah, should you fought for. Fantastic. The staging of the song mm -hmm. in the national final. In say it again. Versing for Perfect. Thank you. <laughs> um, the staging there is it's fabulous. I love it. I love the like really? dancing flowers and the treadmill and the like. Looks like a child's drawing kind of thing. How you mean the video, that idea come the video from? in the video? Yeah, the video. Yes. Well, on um, Vessing first like it was actually a different uh, different visuals. They were like more more three D and more uh, modern. And we said like no, we wanted to have something like more like Yellow Submarine from the Beatles, like uh -huh. very like childish, but yeah. uh, uh, not not too serious. Like not not we, we don't really want people to think that I, I I'm in, like surrounded by clouds and and do things. We wanted to do it very like. Um, yeah, very like, childish, but, like a child's drawing. Yes, yeah, so aquarelle and everything. It's and, like a fantasy world. Yes, like, but 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 not too not too like we don't want it to be looking like real. We wanted we wanted the people to say like oh, okay they they drew something nice. And this is what we wanted to do. Now the question is uh, what will work on the big screen? No, that's what I was going to say to yes. you. What are you taking from Get, there to yes. Stockholm? And I think that what we're going to do like I saw some visuals today. Uh, they're not like how I imagined them exactly but they're more like in the direction because a few days ago I saw some and they were like not not at all what we wanted to do they were like very very modern and things moving and I wanted it to be like more simple and minimalistic you know so we talked to them like more acrylic and more not, not real like cute like yeah and and I think that we're getting in the right direction right now the treadmill is gonna stay I've got a wider one this time because treadmill for resin first leg is very very small and I was very uh, insecure on in it because we didn't practice a lot so I was like oh god I'm gonna have to sing and not trip and this I was gonna ask you about yes. that because we were watching it going please I wish he had just a slightly shorter dress on <laughs> yeah yeah because, but, it, but it has to be like because otherwise I don't know I'm ba I'm gonna, though I'm bare feet because otherwise it would not have worked right but the thing is uh, now we practice a lot. I mean, I practiced this morning on the treadmill, like playing balls, closing my eyes, looking around, and just moving on it. So it feels, so it feels natural for me, which is amazing. And we're going to have another practice tonight because tomorrow is a dancing star, it's a big like black sand show, and I'm going to sing there on the treadmill with the visuals, the like, yes, the visuals that we have for now. So I'm going to do the practice later on to see how it works with the visuals. We're going to try out different things, and uh, yes, yeah, so I hope it's going to be. Uh, Bit like in the video, but not too much. Like more like being on stage and still um, not not too many things happening. Like I want it to be like still uh, like beautiful to watch, not too charged. You know, like oh my god, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Yeah, like, minimalistic. And it's a big stage in Stockholm, isn't it? Yes. The, the, the size and stage. Is LED huge. like how you call it? LED yeah. walls and the floor. Uh, it's it's uh, something very special. And and I always think as a a big stage as a solo artist. 
you have to be really creative with how you use the space but not overuse it. Yes, so. but it's also like the cameras, of course, the camera setting because if some people need like very wide shots because they want to show it like what's happening everywhere, that's different than if I say like, okay, sometimes like maybe just close-ups or like like until it's here yeah. and stuff. So it doesn't have to be like always, uh, the, you don't always have to be, uh, see the whole thing, the whole wall because otherwise you'll be like distracted yeah. from the artist and the song it has to be great mix a good harmony between like Mons did last year yeah I mean he used the whole thing but there were many um, like close-ups and and yes it was it was you know always nice <laughs> did you like Mons last year did you like yes, the song yes I like the staging? song I mean the staging was amazing it was good and <laughs> it was really the best one I've, I've seen like in years and uh, he really used the whole like what possibilities sure and they really worked on it and you saw you could see it. and he still was happy and he still like he was still like I can it like shining from the inside I think that's very important at the energy and to show that you love to be on stage that you love being at the Eurovision to just uh, enjoy this moment with all of your heart and still not trip or something I still not fall over because it was amazing it was very um, everything was perfect but still felt natural like everything was staged but still natural which is amazing which everybody wants to do exactly exactly let me ask you about the language because you're singing in french oh God. you always yes. write in french right you pretty much, pretty yes. much always since i started french. yes i mean when i was little i always sang in english of course because i did not even i, I, I always sang like christina aguilera and beyonce like every girl when she starts singing it's like tries to be like beyonce and christina aguilera but after time i found, I found my own voice and uh, and then I found the language. It was just a coincidence. When I first heard my song with my father, I came from school. I was in French school, and he's been there too. Like you for me, of course. And uh, we just sat there, and I sang like this. He was playing. We're jamming, and yeah, it was so fun. It was one of the first times we ever like played together. And I sang something in French. I don't know why, because maybe I just came home from school, and it felt right. Fun, kind of like was the right thing. And I was like, okay, let's just write a French song for fun. And then we said, okay, let's, let's just do it for many songs. Like, why not? Why not stay with the French language? Because people, it's, it's as natural and that's the most uh, authentic. And that's the most uh, important thing that an artist sounds authentic no matter what language, no matter what song, that he feels comfortable with it. And that's why we said, okay, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna do French. And last year at the Best Inclusive like, Free Selection, we had a French song too. But they told us, like many people were, of course, criticizing. Why don't you sing it in French? Uh, why don't you sing it in English if you like, uh, if you're the entry for Austria, which is weird in the first place. Because, why would you not sing it in yes, German? Right? Um, but then we said, like, why do you always have to sing in English or in your own language? I mean, we could all share our language, like, like exchange them, like to open a new talk. Maybe the next year, France will sing in German or Poland will sing in in, in the I don't know in, in Spanish. Maybe like that would be like more. They would even show more this this come together and uh, this connection between countries. I mean, I don't want to say like do this, but I think I don't think that should be a big problem that I'm not singing in English or in German because when you listen to a song, the first thing you do is just enjoy it. And even if I don't, I never listen to the lyrics in the first place. I just feel the song, and then after a while, I listen to the lyrics. Sometimes I don't know what people wanted, like what the musicians. Uh, what's the story behind these lyrics? What they want to tell us? Because sometimes a musician, you just write and you don't think about it. It's just a feeling. It's just the love you put into the song that, that gets through, and that the the audience um, feels. Sure. And so, yeah. so what's the story behind Want to See? Well, Want to See for me is just it was just a song that made me happy when I first when I first wrote it. It just like always, but of course it's not like a sad song or a ballad or a very modern song. It's uh, it just. It felt very fairy tale like, and I, I mean, I'm, I'm not, I'm not princess or something. But in, in my heart, I've always been a fan of fairy tales and stuff like that because it always made me feel secure, like a child again, and uh, happy, of course, because you're secure, you're happy. And uh, when I when I wrote the song together with my father, it was actually the last song for our album, but it was in a different version than now. We recorded it, and then we like were in a rush for the other our songs, and then we finally said, "Okay, like, are we gonna do this song or not?" Because we wanted to put it on the album, but it was like a very short time. And then he showed me like just the rough demo because I did not even record it properly. It was just for the musicians to play with, and it sounded just it just felt right. It just was like something special about it. I don't know. We were like both like happy when we heard it. Like just like our heart was. Like... And so uh, for me, the message of the song is this just. To spread the feeling of positive vibes, to just make people feel—I don't know. 
happy and uh, secure. Like, just let them dream of another world. And you must be really pleased because it's getting a lot of airplay in Austria on the radio, right? Yes, like, it's just amazing. Yes, they're very supportive about the Eurovision contestants every year. Like, my make play played a lot too, so that's very nice. They still play the make make, so I imagine yes. this time next year they will still be playing. I hope so. to see. I hope so. So do I. I mean, I, of course, like, we, we change the song to be like more like a stage song to Eurovision, but still. Keep the spirit and the authenticity. Yeah, authenticity. <laughs> but on the album, like the version you heard it, I guess, or not? Uh, the see? album version and the radio version. Yes, but the album version is like much more uh, mm -hmm. acoustic, like yeah. with, with strings and everything. Yeah. I, li I like it very much too, but it would not have fit very well like on the big stage with all the TV and stuff. So yeah, that's why we did a bit more um, Eurovision style song. It is. It's quite a. It's kind of a bit retro. Yes. in a good way. It's Thank you. Like, <laughs> vibe back to the like nineties kind of a little bit. Yeah, cool. I, I mean because everything, every most of the songs now are very modern, like with the beats and the clapping or the snapping, and uh, it's amazing too. But for me, this is what I felt I can mostly identify with. I I enjoy listening to retro music. I don't know. It really is my yeah. I enjoy doing that. <laughs> Great, and you have to do what you enjoy, right? Yeah, yeah, because the audience feels. That if you're not comfortable, they, they feel it, they see it, and if you're comfortable, like they are comfortable as well. Absolutely. <laughs> so tell everyone you are in semi-final one. one, which is on Tuesday, the twelfth. No, Tuesday the tenth yes. of May. Yes. Yes, the twelfth is the uh, second yes. semi-final. Yeah. All the dates roll into one, don't they? With your vision, you're like, does like, somebody tell me where I'm I, supposed I, to I, be? My schedule is like, so I don't understand anything. Like, I'm just, I'm, I'm just gonna be there. Fantastic. Um, and of course, everyone should vote. Please, Zoe. I would yes. be so happy if I could go to the final. It'd be like a very dream, like a dream come true. If you like my song, of course. If you don't like it, you don't have to call. But if you like it, I'd be very, very no, happy. No, no, I don't care if you don't like Just vote for her anyway, <laughs> because she's lovely. I'd be very happy, and I uh, thank you for your support in advance. And yes. We have a little present for you from Eurovision awesome. Island. So we've got these little, did you see my little shamrock pin? Yeah. How is it called in English? Yeah. I always say it. This is, it's called a shamrock. A shamrock. Like a lucky Irish I, I, shamrock. I know, I know the thing because yeah. we call it a fierblättriges kleeblatt, which is a bit more complicated. A fierblättriges kleeblatt. Shamrock. Say it again. Fierblättriges kleeblatt. What? Fierblättriges kleeblatt. Kleeblatt. Perfect. Thank you. I have, shamrock. I have a little special Irish shamrock. You're the first person to get these because they've only just arrived and you're the first Thank interview we're doing. Thank you so much. There's a little good luck Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I've also got a little like Eiffel, to I uh, Eiffel Tower with me. I'm going to put them all in like a bit like a luck yeah. purse. And it's going to be like, I'm just open it and have the luck. Nice. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely. You're very welcome. Listen, I hope Dancing with the Stars goes well tomorrow. Thank you. I'm, I will try and find a way to watch that from back in the UK. And uh, we will see you, well, I will see you in London on Sunday. Yes. But it'll be a bit crazy, but we'll try and say hello. I'm so looking forward to it. I've never been to London before. Haven't you? I've never been to England. I've never been to England. I'm so, so How is your English so good and you've never been to England? I've watched series. I love, I love watching things in the original language. So. You'll like London. I think you'll like it. I think so too. My, one of my best friends lives there and I, I asked her to go to the after show party if there's going to be one because then we can hope maybe she can just go. Yeah. Okay, yeah, right. definitely. I'm still looking for one. Yeah, don't ruin your nice leather jacket. Thank you. Look, there. It's beautiful. The Irish is supporting you. Hey! <laughs> thank you so, so much. Thank you so much. I will see you in London on Sunday and then I will see you in Stockholm. Oh my god, it's so crazy. Stockholm. Everything's so crazy. Yay! <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you thank so much. You. Shall I play that? Yeah, go on. <laughs>